welcome back to Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we're going to sit back, relax, and talk about some of the exciting things going on in the world of Linux, open source, and all that other fun, terrifying, spooky stuff. If you're a Windows user, run. I'm Vin. That's Jill. That's Pedro. How are you doing the thing? Hey, Pedro, you're back. You moved like yes. three, three and a half meters from your last spot. You had a run in with a desk. And now <laughs> th there's a desk behind you. Yes. You see that curtain that's standing up over there that's leaning on the sofa? Yeah, that's uh, that's my desk. Because, yeah, I had a run in with you're a desk. You're doing as it in... wrong. You're doing it wrong. That's not how, that's, it's not a very good they desk. They only delivered half of it. How do you only deliver half of a desk? <laughs> Two parts, I'm Aww. guessing. I mean, I'm not a betting man, but... Yeah, no, uh, all in the UK, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you heard it here. Aww. Only the UK. They, they have uh, misshipments on lockdown. What's new with you, Jill? <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I've been having fun playing with the Blender beta, which we are going to be talking about in the show. And our Linux game class streams this week are all, were all a great success, including the Friday Night Foobar Nerd Jeopardy. Yay, that was fun. And the D&D Dungeon Crawler RPG with Jordan. Um, all were very fun. <laughs> we did good on yeah. Nerd Jeopardy until we got to the end where this, this was kind of <laughs> on me. It made it more entertaining because... I just picked Windows for our last category. Turned out it was like Windows <laughs> Phone 7. Yes. <laughs> which we just ate poo ate. the entire time. Yeah. It was kind of interesting. <laughs> Over here, I've been doing a bunch of things, playing around. Um, my latest project is to get Kernel 419 up and working with our render box because of the, just some UDEV rules that I've had to create in order to get the encoders to work, and I'm not making much progress on that, but it's going to be a while before I have to worry about that. Uh, since I'm on 1804, you know, I got a decade to get that sorted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a thing. Um, speaking of time, 2019, moving forward. Oh, yes. 2019 is right around the corner, and with it comes a Linux Invasion, apparently, according to Network World. Uh, so this article was titled, Linux will seem to be everywhere in 2019. Faster, more vers versatile, and secure. Uh, Linux gets better every year. Let's take a look at some of the highlights expected in 2019. And this is basically mm -hmm. Conjectureville, if the uh, subtitle didn't give it away. And uh, they give a little bit of a rundown of how Linux has already been running uh, the cloud, how it basically runs all of the servers and all of the heavy compute um, workloads currently ongoing. Most of them run on Linux. And, well, there are a couple of extra things that are also coming, and machine learning is the hot new mm -hmm. thing. Uh, and everyone wants to push for dominance in what is only just now becoming a market segment all of its own so uh jill will talk to you about the uh the bits about the ai but yeah Linux is also king of the server and supercomputer if you have something that has that much horsepower and you need to have it properly distributed and you need to be able to control where that power goes and what runs what you want to use Linux. Mm -hmm. that's just how it goes so <laughs> yeah no it's uh it's to be expected, so it's not going to be the year of the Linux desktop, but mm -hmm. it, it will be a nice year for Linux, I think. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, definitely. I thought this was a really great article. And as Pedro is say, saying, yes, um, this is actually uh, 2019 will be the year that AI will go mainstream. And, um, and of course, Linux is, as Pedro said, is not only driving the cloud infrastructure for AI, but the supercomputers that run them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we know that Linux rules the world. I mean, that's just, <laughs> we, we all know that as uh, Linux users. And um, now the mainstream is starting to, to see that little penguin everywhere. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> one of the other really cool things is that Linux conventions are not only growing in attendance, but more conferences with a greater diversity of topics are slated for 2019. I mean, you know, we even have uh, <clears throat> Linux for cars and, and Linux for the robotics industry uh, conventions, all these sub conventions under the regular, 
you know, large Linux cons and mm-hmm. uh, community run events like like the Southern California Linux Expo. So they they are just uh, growing like gangbusters, and the more conventions, the better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it's definitely a thing. This article does start out by stating something that kind of grinds my gears just a little bit. It's saying people are using Linux without ever knowing it. Uh, um, kind of in a way, maybe a yeah. small issue. And I know it's phrasing. We're still doing phrasing. Um, maybe you can say, you know, I don't believe that really ne- necessi- necessitates like people using Linux. People are running Linux without knowing they're doing it. I don't think they're using it. Is that fair to say? Is that crazy talk? Am I just being <laughs> More commodity You're being a bit semanticist, but sure. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. It's just like you know, Android. Everyone's using Android, but they don't. People, most people don't know they're using Linux. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. it's like, man, we have a lot of QNX users in the crowd. Like QNX wants that it's in your car. Um, <laughs> the article does point out we have data lakes, AI, supercomputing, and kernel 5.0. If it's ready for 2019, mm-hmm. and as Jill, you pointed out, a gang of conferences. So yeah. we've definitely <laughs> seen that grow in the last decade. In the mythical year of the Linux desktop, Pedro, when do you think that slash dot joke will finally die, if ever? Uh, the day <laughs> Windows says, yeah, Windows is now based on the Linux kernel. Everyone's running yeah. Linux now. <laughs> Next yeah. week, guaranteed. Yeah, okay. Through that, <laughs> Open Physics. This came out, and then everyone went, "Wait, what? What? Yeah, from mm-hmm. Nvidia. This is awesome. <laughs> Nvidia extends physics for high fidelity simulations, and more importantly, it is gone. Open source. It's a uh, the license. It's three clause BSD, completely compatible with GPL, approved by the FSF and OSI. And I saw almost immediately immediately it's like drivers aren't open source and i'm like yeah yeah i know i know yes 100 percent. i feel you i i have that anger but i also believe it's important to reward good behavior with hey good job nvidia and i'm like but what about the drivers hmm I, mm-hmm. to be fair amd's drivers aren't 100 open source either because you still need that proprietary blob even to use mesa be quiet with any pedro you're, you're an, <laughs> nope you're an nvidia <laughs> shill uh 100 i don't know it's very important to remember that physx is not gpu dependent i mean it's something that can yeah. take place on your cpu as well and I very do... taxing on the cpu but yeah it's still mm-hmm. a thing i mean you could do software render back in the way i guess you mm-hmm. still could probably a lot better I do believe we will see adoption in AI for the synthetic data creation. I think that would be a thing, creating real world environments for AI to learn from. Like, yeah, Mm -hmm. okay, that makes sense. But I've seen a lot of people coming back and saying, games, man, this thing, we're all the physics games. So I had to go look up. And if Wikipedia is to be believed, uh, it's known to be edited by manatees. However, Going by that data, only 60 plus ga- under 70 games have been made using utilizing physics since 2006. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. still a significant amount. And most of those yeah. are AAA titles. That's a significant amount. It's a significant <laughs> amount in the way that something years. that's included. That's something that's included in AAA games just went open source. Yes, that's that's significant, <laughs> regardless of the amount, to be fair. Uh, yeah. Expectations <laughs> about the adoption of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, uh, absolutely. Good on you, NVIDIA, if this is your way to get back some uh, good press after the RTX release and the uh, minor kerfuffle that were the couple of uh, RTX 2080 Ti is that caught fire. Uh, mm. Good on you. Seriously, good on you. Yeah. Well, as we as we know, uh, you know, physics, of course, is used widely in the industry, and physics 4.0 will be faster and more stable, and improve functionality in the Unity and Unreal game engines. Uh, yay! Uh, we we need need that. Um, 
that that will really really help animating in Unity as well. <laughs> and NVIDIA clearly understands that AI and big data all run in open source engines and Linux, and they really want to be a part of that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, they, they, they see that coming. They see AI is all, in, all Linux based and uh, physics is being, you know, physics being open sourced is just, it's huge. It's actually really huge, but it, it doesn't, Surprise me because NVIDIA is working on their supercomputers for autonomous vehicles and whatnot. Yeah. And <laughs> my, my, one of my uh, points to this is uh, now Steam Play and Wine Windows games on Linux might launch faster. Yay. So we won't see that little spinning icon <laughs> for running Steam Play for <laughs> physics launch because we'll have it natively in Linux. It would be nice <laughs> so. to see like the nouveau drivers <laughs> get, oh, that's how it works. Okay, we can build this into what we already have. <laughs> yeah. That would be nice. And, and you can do really that nice. because it's an actual open source license. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And um, thank you to Scott Machad in chat for the great Machad. article at PC Perspectives. Machad! Yeah. You hear that, Scoots? Yeah. Your last name is Machad instead of Michaud. From now Machod. On. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Scott. Sorry, I said Scoots. your name. You just got and blown I up, man. Um, <laughs> I, I know you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, maybe temper your expectations. I don't think we'll have Tress FX and hair work style physics uh, stuff mm -hmm. in game, even though it, it's completely available in well a later version. Uh, previous versions yeah. are available in Unity, um, mm -hmm. Unreal Tournament, but yeah. with uh, Epic's Unreal mm -hmm. Engine, maybe who knows? We'll, we'll yeah. see. Man, okay, Blender 2.8 uh, is it amazing? The beta is it? Just crazy it's has... it's awesome okay yeah so many <laughs> yeah so this is a, a major update that us anim animators have been looking forward to for a very long time and uh ton rosendahl thank you this is a beautiful beautiful release and um again this is the blender 2.8 beta that you can download and play with right now and it was running really stable for me so uh, i haven't had any problems with it but one of, one, there are so many major changes, it's hard to go through all of them. But first off, the user interface has major changes with, which keep Blender in line with the workflow of proprietary animation software. And that includes left-clicking to select in the viewports, interactive object gizmos, and separate workstation, workspaces for modeling, animating, sculpting, and texture painting. And the other major thing is there is a new renderer called EV, is a new physically based real-time renderer. Renderer. It works both as a renderer for final frames and as the engine driving Blender's real-time viewport for creating assets. And another major update is the 2D animation grease pencil has now been fully integrated with the 3D workflow. And this puts Blender way ahead of any of the proprietary softwares in the industry that do not do not do 2D very well. So mm -hmm. this this is huge. Blender does 2D and 3D. It's your whole animation workflow. And the one of the other major updates is the ray tracing engine cycles now renders 30% faster and lets you combine GPU and CPU rendering together. This is a first in the industry. None of the other proprietary softwares do this. So th this is a real game changer. And I, I was really excited about this because the UI reminds me of the original 3D Studio for DOS and Lightwave, which I learned animating on in my early years of animating in the late 80s and early 90s. So th this is, it's, it's yeah, they're, they were trying to keep in line with, with the classic animation workflow of the other programs. And they've done it. <laughs> nice. really awesome. <laughs> Pedro? Yay. Yeah, no, uh, it works. I uh, scrolled down to the end of the article, and you can download the uh, the tar.gz. Uh, you download it, you run it, it it works just fine. I uh, had no idea what I was doing, so I went to our uh, forum thread, downloaded the BMW render uh, test scene, mm -hmm. ran that on the, uh, the X230, because I was stuck in laptop land for the past couple of days. Uh, it's like, oh, it took an hour and 20 minutes, but it finished it. Yeah. So it works. Awesome. <laughs> I'm surprised you had the patience for an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> I just left it running and uh, went to do something else because there was plenty yep. to do, to be fair. Yeah. Um, 
Well, <laughs> I, I see Foxy um, put a thing yes. in the yeah, notes no. uh, because <laughs> this is what I did. I downloaded it. Pepsi Challenge mm -hmm. launched it, no issues, and it does give you um, a nice little screen. It's like, what do you plan on doing? It's like, well, mm -hmm. I'm not clever enough to do the 3D animation, uh, 2D, anything like that. However, I know a thing or four about editing video, and it was brave mm -hmm. enough to give me that option. It's like, hey, here's the video editor. And I was like, that's right. Yeah. Let's click that. Oh, boy, is that about as intuitive as a <laughs> chainsaw um, that runs on mind control. Yes. I don't... There's not the chainsaw enough. has what two triggers? <laughs> yeah, it's a psychic chainsaw, but it doesn't tell you on the box. You have to control it. Right? Uh, yes, yes. Um, like genuinely, I, I praise where praise due. Not so much praise where that's due because I just the sniff test on that is <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to get a just no, didn't read anything. But then again, you should to load a clip. <laughs> yeah. What, little tea down there. <laughs> I, I spent I spent time in this, probably a good three or four minutes of like how do I it's like no, not not yet. Not yet. A drag and drop? I don't trust mm -hmm. that. I've been using Linux too long. <laughs> that didn't exist when I started using <laughs> So to be that. fair, even XFCE supports drag and drop. Oh, I, I know it's a thing, but it never <laughs> that part doesn't work in my brain meets, but I'm yeah. Say, yeah. Good on the Blender <laughs> yes. Foundation. Go try it. If it's something you use, I didn't have any crashes with it, but uh, hopefully, hopefully that'll get some attention in the future. It'd be interesting to have that as an option for editing video under Linux. Oh, definitely. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Video editing, it's mm -hmm. thing since we're talking about that. Mm -hmm. I saw a nice little uh, tutorial that was posted mm -hmm. over on Linux Magazine. All this is going to be in our show notes. Um, if you're listening, just go to linuxgamecast.com. If you're watching a video, it'll be uh, linked in the show description. But this is uh, using KDN Live and Image Magic to kind of do just, we just call them wipes. We're, I'm looking forward in the video right now. You can watch Pac Man <laughs> nom one scene transition to the other. And you're like, oh, that would be easy to make. And you would be wrong. <laughs> oh, so horribly wrong. <laughs> this, this, uh, you know, using image magic and Katie and live uh, to create the animation mask. This is something that'd be animated. And when you think Packy man, you chomp, 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 chomp is taking one scene into another transition. Wipe think star Wars, something like that. A little more fancy. This falls into a category. I like to call technically possible. 100%. Yes, <laughs> you can do this. You might not like yourself when you get done, but it's a really good learning experience to get familiar. I wouldn't say give this to somebody right out of the box, but learning how to use FFmpeg, Image Magic, and uh, KDN Live to just get it in your headspace of how these things are done. I know a lot of people will tap out as soon as they get down to the script, but <laughs> pretty good tutorial. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's actually, mm -hmm. if the rest of their tutorials are as good as this one, then they are absolutely worth the, what was it? They have it at the bottom of the article. A couple uh, dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Three dollars. Uh, Three dollars uh, if you want to have it as a PDF. And this was very well written. I was actually, it's like, oh, I get this. I get this. I get this. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, if the rest of them are, it's absolutely worth the money if you want that PDF. Yes. yes. <laughs> Oh, well, th this is an, uh, uh, <laughs> this is a great tutorial and animating masking is one of the techniques I teach my beginning animation students and is required knowledge to work in the field. So this, this, this is something that, that my beginners learn. And, um, you know, because of the beauty and complexity of graphics programs, there are several ways to accomplish this technique with Caden Live. You could actually, you, you don't have to use image magic. You can use, use the GIMP to do the animations or Inkscape. Mm -hmm. And the author knows this too. And in fact, um, uh, the author, Paul Brown, uh, points out that you can even use FFmpeg uh, mm -hmm. to create an animated mask. And I've done that. You know, I've done that before just, just because that was one of the tool, one of the only tools available when, when uh, Linux was new. Um, the GIMP and FFmpeg were the only, only ways you could, animate on Linux. And this, it, actually this technique is um, known as creating an animated 
Alpha Channel. And I have been using this in animation and editing, editing since the early 90s. So it originally was called alpha channeling, and now sometimes they refer to it as compositing or, you know, an animated mask. Um, so they're all synonymous with one another. So it's really, really an essential technique to, to learn if you want to get in the field, too. <laughs> it's so, a possible thing yeah. to do with Katie in live. <laughs> Good. I, I like it. Yeah. It's a good learning experience. Yes. And I, yeah, like, yeah I, I'm glad to know that that's doable and I will never waste the time to do that ever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll stick with our um, pre rendered things I did in Blender like six years ago. It's like, yeah, they still work. Let's keep going with those. All right. Uh, shiny, blinky stuff. So you know, this is Pedro's story. Uh, well, mm -hmm. it was mine because no one had picked it when I went to pick my stories. Uh, it's uh, Glava, uh, and it's available in the art repo uh, if you'd like to get it. Uh, and you can also, of course, download the git. And what it is is an OpenGL accelerated audio visualizer type thingy. And I I can tell you for a fact that it works. Uh, mm -hmm. I was trying the 1904 beta in one of the laptops. And the after compiling, it was looking for the default files in uh, etc. XDG XDG Ubuntu Glava, uh, and it was like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, that uh, directory doesn't exist. Yeah, it doesn't exist because you're looking for it in the wrong place. So I went back. It's just C. That's about the the extent of my programming language. I fixed it. It point it just pointed it to uh, et cetera XDG, and then it works. It works just fine. There is a little bit of a delay, and I didn't see an option to like reduce that delay anywhere. But yeah, there's like a noticeable. It's like a hundred and fifty, a hundred and seventy-five mm. milliseconds ish uh, delay between if you uh, if you're listening to something that has a really defined beat. And you can see that the like the waves only jump up like 175 something milliseconds after the beat. It's noticeable. So yeah, there, there there's that bit of a delay there. I noticed that. Mm -hmm. So is this made basically for people who miss active desktop? Yeah, pretty much. I <laughs> if you'd like to have gifs as your background. Yeah. <laughs> It hundred percent. It falls into that neat category. There, there's no com, no question about that. Like, wh wh what do you do staring at your desktop? Uh, okay. I mean, if you if you have a big enough monitor and you can just have that like above the panel, mm -hmm. and the rest of the monitor is filled with windows and doing mm -hmm. stuff, yeah, it looks it gives a nice effect. But yeah, no, it it. it uses significant resources in an intel uh, only uh laptop so use it on your desktop instead hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> right on that's cool pedro yeah i didn't i didn't i didn't test it um but i'm i was just really excited that we have you know we could always use more opengl audio spectrum visualizers on linux i love these uh uh blingy vi visualizers and i still enjoy using them in vlc and audacious which used to be xmms which is based off of winamp so so i've always loved having <laughs> all, all the all the fun uh, uh blingy effects <laughs> i used to love those um way back with xmms i mean i used to build those and it's like i would yeah. have five or six visualizations it's like these are so neat something changed yeah. i changed man <laughs> like, oh, I don't oh. <laughs> yeah no. this one would be great if it weren't for that delay because the moment i noticed that it's yeah. like oh boy it's ruined now <laughs> that, oh. yeah uh, okay well Let's talk about something very fun, very exciting. Yes. Yay, Sputner, Sputnik turn six. Project Sput, Sput excuse me. <laughs> Project Sput, Sputnik turns to six. And what the, Sputnik is the, uh, the project that um, uh, uh, is released uh, for uh, Dell computers. And um, actually what it is, is Dell was the first major computer hardware vendor to see the potential of Linux on the desktop for front-end software engineers and developers, and not just as a back-end for servers and IT. And um, yeah, they were the, ver the first major computer distributor to you know, really think seriously about putting Linux on the desktop. And you know, Linux on 
Dell servers and workstations as a huge moneymaker, so it was worth it for them to try selling Linux on consumer desktops. And the founder and lead of Project Sputnik, Barton George, and his team are huge ad advocates of Linux and open source. And congratulations go to them that this project is, is, has continued and uh, we've got lots of new uh, Project Sputnik releases on laptops and workstations. So it's really cool. <laughs> Yay. It is. I remember being very excited. Uh, Linux community went haywire way back when, on November 29th and 2012, when the XPS 13 Developer Edition was born. It's like, whoa. Yes. And then <laughs> immediately after that, step two was like, how do we not pay the Microsoft tax? <laughs> that that was definitely a thing because before that, you could get a blank machine. It was about as close as you could get. Uh, you get free DOS, right? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> but yes. But having official <laughs> support is great. Uh, the XPS 13 at so what? It's now in its seventh generation, mm -hmm. shipping with 1804. Yeah. So it's good for another decade. That's how long they last. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, no. Uh, as someone who has a uh, XPS 13, it's my work laptop, so it's, 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 it has to run Windows. But mm -hmm. uh, I may or may not have put in a second M.2 SSD to test Linux stuff on. To say allegedly, uh, <laughs> allegedly, yes. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know the Torx screwdriver or seven, um, but no, it is very. It's awesome to see like where they started and how they are still going. And now it's not just the XPS thirteen anymore. Now they have the precision uh, lines, yes, which are like yeah, high awesome. end uh, workstation grade laptops and desktops. With Linux, that's very good yes. to see. Very good yeah. to see indeed. Awesome. Times they are changing. Um, yes. Oh, yes. Let's beat this mm -hmm. dead horse again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Linux on your phone. It. People have tried. People have failed. People have tried to uh, get some idea of the market that they would have by launching an Indiegogo for $32 million. But this is not that. This is the Nekuno, 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 something like that. I think. Yeah. Nekuno Mobile, <laughs> um, an open phone with Plasma Mobile. It's the KDE uh, mobile implementation that has. It had a much maligned tablet that never saw the light of day, and they've been trying desperately to have it on something, and well, now it's a phone, and you know. I will be the first one to say <laughs> that I am very much looking for a Linux phone, something that uh, is still functional. I know it will never be as good as Android because it will never support all of those apps. That's just inevitable. But something that is at least functional. I look functional. forward to the feedback for that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> something that's functional i'm willing to get like a secondhand nexus 5 or nexus 4 and run ubuntu mobile on it or maybe plasma mobile but hey if the nakuno people uh want uh someone who will point out every single thing that's wrong about their phone i will be very happy to look at it Pedro, that say. it's going to be Linux users in general. This is wrong. This is wrong. And they're not doing it to be mean or malicious. This is in our DNA. No, like no, no. Yeah. It's a bug. It's a bug. And I promise I will give you a fair shake, though. I think like most of you, <laughs> yeah. anyone listening or watching the show, we, we've mm -hmm. put Linux on a phone at some point out of curiosity. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, and you've mm -hmm. had the neat experience. You're like, okay, now I need to be able to use the phone again. Yes. <laughs> that's kind of where we are. And yes, I hear you back in the very back. Sailfish. Yeah. <laughs> That happened. I admit that that happened, but it didn't stick. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunately. And WebOS. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I use. I have that open WebOS. Yeah, what? I do have open WebOS on on my um, uh, on my cell phone. So I have a cool. BlackBerry <laughs> tablet with um, WebOS on it. Mm. Mm -hmm. it's like that's the thing all right let, let's keep that in the box maybe we can sell it in 20 years <laughs> it wasn't horrible it was actually not a bad experience and it did act real multitasking yeah but then again it rhymed with blackberry and wah wah <laughs> that's the end of that story <laughs> no they just release android phones now yeah that's what they do that's how they roll so as somebody who's been mm -hmm. going Really? That's how much the chargers cost? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about uh, 
do the Tesla <laughs> Model 3 running Ubuntu. <laughs> yes. And most importantly, YouTube. Yeah, that's the thing. You knew this was going to happen. I'm surprised it took this long, but... Yes. <laughs> this was from... <laughs> what is I do not like you Reddit the new look it's Reddit. stupid I don't know what things are <laughs> yeah. but this is supposed to be you our Tesla Motors uh, TR uh, Somers Thank TR you. Somers yeah. mm. that's pretty I'm right this is terrifying admittedly but also very very exciting to have this yes type. Basically goes on just like, hey man, once you can SSH into something, as most of us know, it's like, yeah, I got it now. We're good. Yeah, no, it's a, look, I J tagged it. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> oh, and hey, look, it's running XFCE. Yes. <laughs> I am just saying, you know. Oh. Well, my feelings on it when I first saw it was I'm sure Elon's inner Uber nerd would approve, but you know, mm -hmm. he knows that it's not safe for the average motorist, but I'm sure he would approve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you can see all the specs. It's running an uh, Intel mm -hmm. Atom processor. Uh, ooh. Uh, <laughs> you want an Intel Atom uh, driving your Tesla? Uh, yes. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you are going low power, it's either an Intel Atom or an ARM processor of uh, some matter. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, uh, dude SSH'd it to his car. Uh, basically, all he does is he spun a uh, an X session running on a different TTY, and away we go. He could just yeah. have a desktop. <laughs> it's cool. It's neat. It's going to pose me with like genuine moral decisions. I was thinking about that with you know if you buy a new android device it it's not when it's like how many it's not even days it's hours until you've rooted mm -hmm. it. it it's just <laughs> going to happen this is going to be a legitimate mm -hmm. issue especially with people on teslas on leases yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway i fully expect elon to tesla as a company to have that locked up in short order after they get done yes. Fishing the booster out of the ocean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that one took a dive. Got a little thirsty. Just a little bit. All right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and yes, we all know we can run Doom on it. <laughs> you probably so, run yeah. yeah, Arm probably Doom. <laughs> all right. Uh, what do we got? Uh, oh, somebody's still trying to back up Google Drive from Linux. Yes, because Google yes, is, yes, yes. Yeah, it's any day now we're going to release that. <laughs> Well, everyone is always asking what apps they can use to backup files on Linux to Google Drive. And um, this article has the top 12 best uh, Google Drive Linux client software. And yeah, it's actually a very, very good good software. There's, uh, there's lots of different options. And um, InSync is really good. Uh, GoSync. Over, uh, Overdrive is another really good one. Um, Deja Dup but, comes pre-installed oh, with quite a few distros. <laughs> Yes, and this article was uh, was written before Deja Dup uh, uh, came out with their Linux client, so that was r really cool too. So we have both of those articles in the show notes, and because you know Google Drive's open API, there are a lot of third party Google Drive backup and sync apps for the desktop and and CLI. And in fact, I've been using Text Drive on the console for quite some time. It's a very good um, CLI client, so that's. That's really, really awesome. And I also love our clone because it can there back up to go. most, <laughs> yes, most of the popular cloud services, including Google Drive, Amazon S3, OneDrive, Dropbox, Mega, Box, et cetera. And I've actually been using that for, for quite some time because I have a lot of, lot of space uh, on, uh, on Amazon S3 as uh, well as Dropbox and Box. <laughs> So this is, yeah, it's no, really uh, nice to have this. I'm absolutely <laughs> with you on that one, Jill, because uh, our yeah. clone does a very good job of basically our syncing whichever folder you tell it to, to whichever yeah. cloud hosting service uh, you want it to. It's like, oh, you want this on Mega? Boom, done. Oh, you want this yeah. on Dropbox? Boom, done. That Just use our clone, seriously. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> If we're going to be gauging these in <laughs> difficulty to configure and set up, who's the winner? Uh, they shot Dup comes pre-installed in a lot of distros, so again, that yeah. one wins. <laughs> okay, yeah. didn't, didn't ask about installing, configuring. Uh, yeah, it's completely yeah. gooey. You just sign in with Deja Dup. Does you it have just a wizard? In. I like wizards. Yes. 
Yeah, I guess. <laughs> and it lets well, you set how often question, you'd Pedro. like. <laughs> I refuse to use anything with the setup wizard. Um, <laughs> yeah. I figured you would, but a lot of people, you know, prefer it's like, okay, I want this to sync at this much time, uh, after this much time, and these folders and whatever else you might want to set up. <laughs> it's all gooey. All joking aside, yeah, there's a, the only thing that worries me about a, all right, no, that's a lie. I'm still genuinely irritated that Mozilla, not Mozilla, I'm looking at the next story. Google has not released Google Drive for the Linux desktop. How? Mm -hmm. How? That, er. Uh. Well, uh, their official reason yeah. was that there are so <laughs> many better alternatives. It's like, no, that smells like um, laziness. Laziness, this, yeah. This, this leads me to part two of the statement is that could break at any time. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> Google Drive may very well go away tomorrow if the Googs decide it. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. I, I just yeah. had to get that out on behalf of the people. Like, yeah, why doesn't that? Why isn't that a thing? I agree with you. I feel it. Okay. Uh, paywall. Mm -hmm. Paywalls, yes. like, what, not really a paywall. Have you ever been to a website like once and you're like, that's fine. Then you go back to it. And it's like, hey, man, you've read like 10 articles. How about, how about giving us a few shekels for that? And you're like, nah, this website's dumb. <laughs> yes, uh, quite a few people have. So many, in fact, that they decided to create a, a few add-ons to uh, get rid of that paywall pr uh, thing and one of the most popular ones was um paywall blocker paywall yeah, yeah paywall blocker <laughs> yeah. uh and there were quite a few there are quite a few others in the uh firefox extension store thingy but this one was the only one that got nuked and the only reason that mozilla told the maintainer as to why it got nuked was the one that says that Mozilla reserves the mm -hmm. right to nuke your extension from orbit if the sun is shining the wrong way. And they did. <laughs> uh, so whichever the case may be and whether or not this extension will show back up on the uh, on the Firefox store remains to be seen. But to be fair, this yeah. in essence is uh, basically hijacking your cookies. And when the website goes looking for a specific cookie to see whether or not you're subscribed, uh, this extension tells it, yes, this person is subscribed, go away. And then you get to read all of the articles. Uh, I can see how this would be a bad precedent to allow something that is actively exploiting a flaw in the cookie system to let that stay up. Uh, and, you know, all the lawyers that might not be too happy that this is happening. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, this isn't exactly a um, an extension that I've personally used. I use that. I use ad blockers. I use um, Privacy Badger. Uh, yeah. Script block. Mm -hmm. And what's the one that applies the uh, promotions on Amazon? Honey? I have that honey, one. Honey, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I like honey. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and Cory Doctorow, you know, he points out that, yes, as Pedro was saying, there's two other bypassing paywall extensions still available mm -hmm. in the Mozilla add-on store. <laughs> uh, you know, what's up with that? And um, the, they're still available in the Chrome Chrome add-on store. So Google didn't uh, seem to take offense to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Google gets very smitey with certain extensions. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. They absolutely so really do, surprising. but yeah, I could see that. There's plenty to choose from, and it's the vague wording, I think. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. be aware of that, and picking one as opposed mm -hmm. to making it a blanket policy to yeah. get rid of everything. Like, hey, we're all fair, we're getting smashed. I kind of deal with it the same way that, you know, I run no script, period. Yeah. I do. <laughs> I got to really like your web zone before I'm going to enable that. If you're... Website doesn't render without scripting. I don't read it. You know, <laughs> it's usually like step one with that. But I do want to say maybe an unpopular opinion is if this is a real problem. I mean, it's never been a problem with me personally to even look into an extension like this existing. It's like I <laughs> never rent. This is not a problem in my life. But no. if you're visiting a site to the point to where it's triggering, there paywall 
may, maybe consider subscribing to the site because let's yeah. face it, me and you both know you have ad blocking enabled already. So, yeah, maybe. Mm, I don't yeah. know. Crazy talk. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> if you are consuming, if you are consuming that particular media's content then by all means give them some money so they can put more it's chances are you like what you're reading otherwise nope. you would have gone somewhere else by I'll, just, now. I'll just read it somewhere <laughs> else after i get into this site <laughs> i don't know i also understand the other side of like i don't like being told what I, what I'm, i can and cannot access you know yeah then it becomes a I challenge that. it's like oh yes. i gotta get in there <laughs> i don't even want want to get in there it's gonna mm. get in there uh, but if i go to a website and it immediately blocks my view of what I'm trying to read with GDPR, cookies, the stuff that I have to agree with or they expect me to agree with without reading, then I immediately close it and go somewhere else. Yeah. Well, thank you for the GDPR as every web zone now has like, we use cookies. <laughs> thank you. I get it. Then again, script block kids. Use that yeah. 100%. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the thing. So keep in mind, if you're wondering where that extension went, that's where we're yeah. at. <laughs> All uh, right. Uh, just a quick mention. Something we played around with earlier last week is multi-streaming mm -hmm. server. It's an engine. How, how do you say it? Nginx? <laughs> Nginx. Yes. I, I had always heard it said as Nginx. So yes. Nginx. <laughs> that is so cute. Nginx. I love that. It's an RCMP <laughs> module. Basically, you're going to be sending video streaming to multiple services simultaneously. You can do YouTube, Twitch, Daily Motion, Hit, anything you can send video bits to. This is going to take care of it. I just wanted to give it a little plug. It's really easy to set up. Now, there's a service called Restream, which will do it for free, but it'll put its branding on there, and it has, you know, different tiers. But the good thing about this is as long as you're not transcoding, we're sending the same bits to Twitch and YouTube. Yay. Most importantly, we're running this on a one instance of one thread, you know, on a shared service for 10 bucks a month. Which kind of leads you is you can do three or four streams off like a Raspberry Pi 3 if you have the mm. bandwidth at home to do this. And, you know, if we really wanted mm. to and get fancy with it, we could spool up our own thing, slap a player on it and be like, hey, look, we're our own CDN for video <laughs> now. Then we'd be broke instantaneously. But <laughs> yes, <laughs> that'll be in the show notes if you want to come check that out. Something you've been thinking about. Then again, if you don't care. Yeah about mm -hmm. branding or anything you can use restream io's service for free mm -hmm. yeah Very all cool. right that's the thing <laughs> it was pretty easy to set up i think uh jordan's even shoved it into a container so oh maybe cool. there'll be a link to yeah. that all right i think uh we're gonna get into a slice <laughs> of pie but before we're going to <laughs> chill out we got to pay some bills, oh, yeah. but we're not going to do that by, hey, buy a uh, mattress ad. Buy ads for mattresses. Yes, here. On <laughs> yeah, go ahead and buy yeah. an ad. <laughs> we're going to be rolling out. Uh, if you want to support the show, the best way to do that is through Patreon. And all the beautiful people currently in chat right now hanging out in Discord are our beautiful party patrons. Uh, Christmas time. It's that time of year. Once again, it's Christmas time. South Park. That's the only thing I know about Christmas. But if you're going to be buying stuff, we got mm -hmm. Amazon affiliate links. That doesn't cost you anything. We get a little taste of that action. We have a uh, humble new bundle just came out. We get a cut of that. If you click on that Bitcoin, I heard it's going away. So just send them all to <laughs> us. Uh, we want to thank all 113 beautiful party oh, patrons yes. <laughs> making Yay, it possible. We love you. 265 a week. We throw in some bonuses. You get early access, like a show you might not even know about Doctor Who. <laughs> We do a Doctor Who podcast <laughs> every year, and there's a video component to it or audio if you want to listen to that. We do have a pre pre super shows, and if you like our shenanigans, we get an entire extra hour delivered. It's our production meeting. You can even join in Discord and listen to that live before the show every Saturday, and we do have early access to our uh, uncut series. That's mm -hmm. the and it helps us finance crazy, crazy ideas where we have Friday, which is mess around night. Let's try new things. One of the new things we tried, Nerd Yay. Jeopardy. And <laughs> that, that was kind of fun. I enjoyed it. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, Pedro, you can rock the uh, Tuesday streams, but normally Pedro was busy moving and all this. 
all oh, these yes. random excuses. And not having a desk and shouting at Amazon, just like, bring me my desk. <laughs> we can't trust oh, that. Man. So we did some uh, of that business. And are you guys uh, still going to be rocking and rolling on Thursdays with D and oh, something? Yes. Double Ds? Yeah, we're, we're still going to do the Double D Dungeon Crawler on Jordan stream. So that's going to be a lot of fun tomorrow. So part two is tomorrow. I'll keep an eye out for that. <laughs> uh, I'll try. It's one of those things. It's like cantaloupe. Maybe one day I'll learn to understand it and trust it. Aww. Uh, we also have a wish zone. If you want to kick us that way, we got a couple things. Basic. I'm actively trying to talk myself into buying that video card, but I might be getting a navy <laughs> later on. But we hit the goal. Oh, What's this? Here it is. <laughs> Surprise. We Thought I was going to forget about it. Merch. Yep. We finally got merch. <laughs> we have the one chair, the classic, the Duke. Um... Francophile. Mm -hmm. I spent some time on that. That was the one I did a little mm -hmm. bit of work on. We have the three yes. chair moon. <laughs> and yeah. this will only be this is the only one that I'm gonna be like, hey, it's gonna go away because it'll go away until next year and there'll be a better version of it next year. Hail Santa. Santa. <laughs> so it is a, that time of year. So yes, hail Santa. It's Christmas time. <laughs> yes. Mugs, stickers, teas, <laughs> long, uh, hoodies, <laughs> all that fun stuff is now available. It has Linux Yay. Gamecast on the back, so people will know to stay away from you at quite a distance it'll be very visible You're like whoa that's a linux person nope or you might mess up have you ever messed up and worn one of your linux t-shirts and you're like oh no that person's looking oh no they're gonna come over here and talk to me yeah. <laughs> it's terrifying but thank you thank you each and every one of you for making this possible and uh see that was a lot better than a mattress head Yes. Oh, much better. I mean, we're basically advertising ourselves, so hey. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind and there's a big that. store button on LinuxGameCast.com where you can just click on it. It'll take you there. It's yes. big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I tried to make it the other day. Did I mess up the CSS? It should be the same size as the other buttons. It's bigger now. Uh, it's bigger now. <laughs> What's it going to do a slice of pie? Oh, on a t oh, yellow t-shirt. <laughs> oh, this is great. This is this is learn how to make your own uh, and use your own Beowulf cluster. This is the mini nodes Raspberry Pi 3 um, com uh, <laughs> um, computer on modules carrier board get, that can accommodate up to five Raspberry Pi pi uh computer on module modules and a small easy to use platform and there is even an integrated um, gigabit switch for networking so it's got one gigabit switch but it it knows to to switch among the um the nodes and that's really really awesome because on most systems you have to have separate network devices for each node so that is really cool and it can be used for AI, containers, the Internet of Things, and other industries that require remote computing, or as a great way to learn computer clustering. Don't we all want to learn how to create our own Babel cluster? <laughs> and it's nice to see another awesome application for the Raspberry Pi compute module. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's not that often that we get to talk about the compute module. Uh, yeah, the RAM and every time we do... <laughs> yeah, every time we do, we're like, someone finds something that will actually make use of make the compute you. module. It's just something that <laughs> no other Raspberry Pi could do that that specific form factor would allow you to do. I saw and somebody yeah. that made use of one. <laughs> yeah. Yes. They made a gaming handheld with it. Oh, oh yeah, 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 we yeah, talked about right. that one. That's right, yeah, we yeah. talked about that one, yeah. This is kind of <laughs> interesting, especially when you dial in that it's got switched gigabit Ethernet on it. So I was like, huh. Wolf cluster. I think the the unit cost about was it two sixty, I think I believe. Uh, yeah. it's gonna be between mm -hmm. two fifty nine and two sixty eight. So Yeah. That mm -hmm. yeah, I mean just having a switch gigabit AI, cheap AI, AI on a budget. I don't know. It's yeah. a, it's a lot cheaper cheaper than the Tesla business. So <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And yeah, years ago, I used to dream of making my own Beowulf cluster, but I kind of already have, of course, with my animation render farm and all my Blade servers. But this is nice because it's it's <laughs> it's a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> it's awesome. Yep. Indeed. What else can we do with pies this week, Pedro? Well, this week uh, we can 
basically blow my uh, socks off because when I read the uh, the yes. URL for this news, it's like GameCube memory card Raspi. It's like, oh, it's going to be one of those novelty cases that someone puts a Raspberry Pi inside the memory card for it. Nope. No, they went full on uh, serial over memory card with this one. So basically, they give you the pinouts and the layouts of the uh, the memory card. Then they hooked some wires to it. Mm -hmm. They plug those wires to the GPIO of the Raspberry Pi. And they say, well, now we can load games into the memory card. We can edit the saves that are in that memory card and the games that are in that memory card. We can basically interface... 100% with the GameCube through the memory card using a Raspberry Pi. So cool. How insane is that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's having a hobby, yeah. then there's this. Yes. <laughs> it's like, kudos. Uh, uh, I applaud yeah. you. That absolutely rocked the socks off my feet, and I'm like, what the? How? <laughs> Seriously. I, I have Good nothing job. but yeah. undying love when I just read the word logic analyzer. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that somebody's interested in getting S done or mm -hmm. burning a few months. Mm -hmm. Definitely having a project for something to do. What's the end goal of this, Pedro? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, he doesn't know. The uh, <laughs> the person <laughs> who made this does not know. It's like, yeah, I can use this for a number of things, but I'm still unsure about what exactly to do next. So, yeah, no, it's... Uh, uh, right now, it's just a neat thing, what he made, that can mm -hmm. do a lot of things, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have a specific use. <laughs> hey, maybe you're working on a neat thing, something made of awesome sauce, and you want to tell us about it. Yeah. We'd love to talk about it. And an easy way to do that is head over to our contact page. Slam that contact button. See, I told you that store... Same size as support, Pedro. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure you pick the correct topic, uh, LWDW, or if you want to talk uh, gaming, we get that going down. Or if you have games, use that one. Or relationship advice, if you feel uh, particularly brave, prove you're not a robot, which kind of works sometimes. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It believes <laughs> me in this web browser, but in Chrome... It's not having it, man. It's like, hey, I need you to find some traffic lights for me. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah. and Chrome, it's Google going, hold on, you're using our browser. You're going to train our AI. Okay, oh, find yeah. the street yes. lights. <laughs> I don't know, man. Street lights, they're all the same. They look like cardboard. <laughs> they look delicious. Uh, so, uh, someone was asking me about some cardboard. <laughs> Hey, Pedro. Yes. <laughs> um, have you thought about doing uh, make use of video with cardboard? I made a 360 controller battery compartment out of cardboard once. What could you make with cardboard, Pedro? Cody. Uh, well, I could live out of cardboard, which I've been doing you know, for the past <laughs> couple of days, because that's where all my stuff is, because I didn't have a desk to put it on. Yeah. <laughs> and there's the desk and more cardboard right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> is that enough cardboard for you cody because <laughs> it certainly is for me <laughs> i don't know man i mean you, you can make a 360 controller battery compartment out of card you, you know what you, you just cut out the middleman and buy one from nintendo right don't they sell cardboard oh. kits for this whatever yes this? yeah, the, yeah the switch yeah yeah the switch cardboard yep mm -mm. but look you, you have a gang of cardboard now i mean you you have a tsunami of cardboard behind you you can fit like two pedros in that box so <laughs> yeah it's very thin, <laughs> that specific one, but you can fit several of me in all the cardboard boxes that we used. Yeah. <laughs> I think what uh, Pedro is saying is he'll be using <laughs> what he'll be making with his excess cardboard as a container to put the aftermove junk into and take out to the wheelie bin. <laughs> I've already done quite a few of those. Okay. There's there's more. <laughs> there's always more, man. You're like, what? Then you, then you get to the part of the move where you're like, can I bear it apart? Well, yeah, I can. Bye. <laughs> it's like do i really yeah. no i haven't used this in three years bye oh, oh man but then, then it's like four months later you're like oh, why did i throw that away oh jeez oh. it is truly a struggle uh, you can use the cardboard to build your to build a case for your a new ryzen system mm-hmm <laughs> There you go. I've 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 uh, built cases out of cardboard before. 
<laughs> yeah, no. Listen, listen, See, that's even more ghetto than <laughs> no, it's not. how far down I'm willing to go. <laughs> you gotta be, a, you gotta be very distinguished with it. In university, I straight up that was a very valid thing to do as pizza boxes. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But exactly. then again, you know, it was desktop PCs too. Not everything was a tower. Yeah. <laughs> so you get a lot of pizza boxes, man. We can make you a tower of pizza and greasy. Oh, it'll smell delicious <laughs> once you render something. And it will uh, be slightly askew like the PS4. <laughs> and it'll be on fire. <laughs> oh, man. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to do better than that. We're going to roll out of here. Thanks for showing up. We're going to do some credits. How about that? Aw. Bye, yes. everyone. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Maybe we're gonna do some credits. I don't know. Ah! <laughs> we I was credits? promised credits. I was Yay! <laughs> we need our credits. <laughs> no, we're not doing credits this week. Okay, no credits. <laughs> you will have to answer to the Patreons. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Episode one forty-seven. <laughs> oh, that's cool, Ben. Awesome. Awesome. No <laughs> <laughs> it was all over. <laughs> that works, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of cool. <laughs> Aww. Thank you, Ben and Pedro, as always. And thank you, so Jill. much fun. I think I have everyone's name in there this week. I'm sure I'll find out. <laughs> yes. Yes, where's my name? Say yeah, is Dirty Dean in there this time? Yep, there he is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> we made sure, Dirty Dean, you're in there. <laughs> yeah, no, even the real Pedro Mateos. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, we love you, chat room. Go buy some merch. Brad. <laughs> <laughs>